Hello, I'm Gabby Coletta, sharing practice today from Red Rock, Nevada, one of my favorite deserts, hopefully to bring some spaciousness into our mind and bodies for practice. We're working towards a pose called Baby Grasshopper. So it'll involve twisting, hip opening, hamstring love, some IT band stretching. You might want props. If you do, I suggest bricks and a strap to support the practice. And today's invitation is, can we work through tamas? Tamas is this quality, this subtle energy of inertness, of stuckness, of darkness or ignorance. Oftentimes we can feel this tamasic energy in our bodies when we're kind of stuck or stagnant in our life. When there's challenge but we lean on our old coping mechanisms, our own patterns of behavior, patterns of thought, rather than rising to the occasion or the work of moving through it of creating change. And so this practice is all about a little bit of heat, a little fire to step into the work to really alchemize what is stagnant in our bodies and minds, and also to play, to bring a little perspective shift and to break out of those habitual ways of being, feeling, seeing, etc. So I invite you to join me in working through tamas. You can start in a comfortable seat, easy cross-legged seat, or virasana, whatever serves you. We'll begin with some breath work. So when you're ready, settle into your seat. Use any support you need. I invite you to close the eyes or soften the gaze, just allowing your awareness to turn inward. You can place the palms face down for a little more grounding today, or face up if you're looking to create more opening to whatever unfolds. Let's just take a deep arrival breath. Draw on a big inhale. And sigh the breath out. Already cleansing, releasing stagnant energy. Let's do that twice more. Inhale even fuller. And empty. Once more, big inhale. And exhale, let it go. Inviting the bones to settle, the muscles to soften, the whole body to arrive. And start to invite your mind to catch up with where your body is physically in the here and now. Let the sits bones root down, the muscles and the legs soften, releasing any patterns of holding or tightness. And as you imagine the whole bottom body sinking, rooting into the earth, start to invite space in the spine. Lengthen, lift the heart. Relax the shoulders down the back. The back of the neck be long, the crown of the head reach up. Begin to deepen your breath slowly, in and out through the nose. You're welcome to bring your hands to heart center, palms pressed, or one hand to heart, one hand over that hand. And I invite you, if there's a specific intention you want to set, maybe inspired by breaking through the tamas or your own, feel free to set your intention now. And bow head towards heart, just honoring this intention, this anchor for your practice. And slowly release the hands if you move them to the heart. If you're cross-legged, switch the cross of the legs. On your next inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Take a big breath in. Let the spine grow tall. Palms press. And hands come to heart center. Just gathering your focus, your energy here. Twice more, breath and body together. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Grow tall, lift the heart. Palms meet. Hands come to heart center. Once more, big inhale, spine getting long, ribs expanding, heart lifts. And hands through heart center. Bring it all the way down to the knees. Pause here. Let the spine get long. We'll do one round 
Kapalabhati, skull shining breath here. Forceful exhales through the nose, draw the navel center in as you exhale, almost like uh, bellows breath or pumping, pumping the belly. If you're on your moon or prone to get lightheaded, feel free to just stick with a steady, even breath. So draw in a big inhale, cleansing exhale. Inhale two thirds to begin. Exhale, 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 exhale. Forceful exhales through the nose. So already we're starting to build this fire element, starting to invite some stuck energy to metabolize. As you continue to breathe here, forceful exhales through the nose. You can speed it up for a little more fire or slow it down to stay grounded as you build this heat. We'll be here for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, full breath in through the nose. Perhaps pause at the top. Slow exhale through the nose. Let the air escape like it's escaping through a pinhole empty. We'll do this breath twice more in twists. When you're ready, reach the arms to the sky. Grow tall. Heart lifts. Exhale, twist to the right. Left hand to right knee. Right hand anchors behind you. Couple breaths to deepen the twist first. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale to ring it out. Twist. Relax the shoulders, any neck pain, keep the head in the direction or the eyes in the direction of the heart. Otherwise, you can look over the left. One more breath. And then we'll begin our next round here. Big inhale, cleansing breath first. Full exhale to empty out. Inhale, two thirds to begin. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Exhale, forceful exhales through the nose. Really pumping the belly, drawing the navel center in. If you're familiar with the bandhas, these energetic locks, you can also engage mula bandha, the root lock. It's almost like holding your pee on every exhale. Here for five, four, three, two, one, inhale, unravel to center, hands on the lap, draw the breath in. Slow, exhale through the nose, empty it out. Last round in a twist, reach the arms to the sky, grow tall, heart lifts, and then twist to your opposite side, right hand to left knee, left hand anchors behind you. Inhale, spine grows tall, back of neck long. Exhale to ring it out, twist, soften the shoulders. And then take a cleansing breath here to begin. Really empty out the breath. Imagine emptying even the stagnant breath at the bottom. Inhale two thirds to begin. Exhale, 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 exhale. Forceful exhales through the nose. You can even imagine every exhale is like this energetic sweeping, sweeping any cobwebs out from our central energy channel, from our subtle body, from our mind. Breathe here. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale to center, slow inhale through the nose. Slow exhale to empty. Just take a moment to notice, notice any subtle shifts already. Just refining your awareness. And then make your way onto all fours. Move slowly, even in these places of transition, can you rein in the presence? Spread the hands, stack shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, even the shins anchor. Next, inhale, draw the heart forward, lift the chin, the gaze, let the collarbones broaden. Exhale, press the earth away and round, let the crown of the head drop, cat pose. Few rounds here, opening front and back of heart. Start to slow down the breath, invite ujjayi breath, victorious breath here. So it's a gentle constriction in the back of the throat, almost like fogging up a mirror. In and out through the nose. 
You can stay here with cow and cat opening front and back of heart or find any intuitive movement, any kind of curiosity. Feel free to explore that, C curving the spine, swaying the hips, barreling the torso. And really tune in. What feels stuck? What feels tight? Maybe that's a place to send a little extra energy. Wherever our, our awareness goes, our prana, our life force flows. So if there are areas of tightness, send your mind there, your breath there. About one more breath, just exploring movement. And then come back to your neutral table. Send your right arm to the sky, open arm to the right. Thread right arm under left. Rest the right shoulder, the right cheek. You can keep pressing the left fingers into the earth to spiral a deeper twist or walk the left fingers forward. Bigger focus on the twist here. If you have a leg variation you want to take, you're welcome to take it. But lean into your grounded shoulder. Pull your top shoulder back. The thigh bones are straight up and down. Take one more breath here. Bring the left hand to frame the face, press into the earth, send right arm back to sky, unraveling, heart open. Release the hand down. Other side, left arm sweeps up, big wings span across the chest as you pull shoulders down the back. And then thread left arm under right, rest the left shoulder, the left cheek. Again, hips stay stacked over the knees. You can press your right fingers into the earth for a deeper twist or walk the right hand forward for a long line of energy in the side body. If there's a leg variation, go ahead and take it. But really focus on the twist here, leaning the top shoulder back for one more breath. Bring your right hand to frame the face, press into the earth, unravel the twist, open, and release the right the hand down. <clears throat> Tuck your toes, walk your hips towards your heels, and then drape your torso up into yogi toe stretch. Really spread all 10 toes, even the pinky toe, get some love. We'll be doing some standing balance, so it's really good to open up the bottoms of our feet. Bring your hands together, interlace the hands, and start to make figure eights with your wrists. Just opening up the wrists. Try to keep the elbows together. And just notice that there is maybe a habitual direction you decided to go or an instinctual direction. Can you switch the direction? See if you can do the figure eights in the other way. Just a little challenge breaking out. One more breath. Interlace the hands or keep them interlaced, but press the palms forward. Send the palms to the sky, side body long. Crescent up and over to the right. Come back to center, up and over to the left. And back to center, and release the hands down. Untuck the toes, give the toes a little love tap on the earth, just letting some fresh circulation into them. Then really spread the hands, tuck the toes, hips up and back, Adha Mukha Svanasana, down dog. The next three breaths are yours to greet your body and explore. Really spread the hands. They're about shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider if your shoulders feel tight. Space between the pointer and middle finger face forward. Start to really anchor into the L of the hands. Send the booty up high in the air, but keep the back of the knees supple and soft. Release the heels towards the earth. Deepen your breath here, Ujjayi breath still. Notice if the mind starts to wander or feed an old thought. Can you bring it back into this moment? And the next inhale, rise onto the tippy toes, up high. Exhale, sink the heels down. Inhale, rise up on the tippy toes. This time, swivel the heels over to the right. Sink them towards the earth. Really press into your hands. Inhale, heels up to the sky, towards center, and over to the left. Sink the heels down, press into the hands. Come back to the center. From down dog, shift your weight forward into plank or modified plank. Really spread the hands. You can always lower the knees to the earth. Keep the collarbones broad, back of neck long, and then hips up and back. Adha Mukha Svanasana, down dog. We'll pulse twice more with our breath. Inhale, ripple forward to plank or modified plank. Gaze at the top of your mat. Let the back of the heart expand. Exhale, hips up and back. 
And once more, inhale, ripple forward to plank or modify. This time we hold for three breaths. Really spread the hands, collarbones broad, draw the navel in, even lengthen your tailbone towards your feet. One more inhale here. Lower knees, chest, chin to the earth. Slide onto the belly, untuck the toes, take your arms wide for wide arm bhujangasana. Inhale, lift the heart, loop the shoulders back. Exhale, release forehead down. Option to add a twist here. Inhale, lift the heart as you press the tops of the feet down. Drop left shoulder, look over right. Inhale, back to center, lift the heart, draw the belly in, and then twist the other way. Right shoulder drops, look over left. Inhale, back to center, lift the heart, draw the belly in. Exhale, release. Take the hands under the shoulders and start to press yourself through all fours, round the back through cat pose. Take it into child's pose and pause here. Take a big breath. Let the breath on the back expand, the skin stretch. A big exhale. And know that as we start to build heat in the practice, you can always return to child's pose here to find your breath, to find nourishment. On your next inhale, rise to table. Tuck the toes, hips up and back, down dog. Send your gaze and your feet to the front of the mat. Walk mindfully, footprint by footprint, all the way to the top. We'll meet in a forward fold, the first one of practice. So take a really deep bend in your knees. Let the ribs drape over thighs. You can grab opposite elbows. Interlace the hands behind the neck. Elbows point down for a little neck release and traction. About two more breaths here. You can gently sway side to side if that helps release the low back. Maybe shake the head yes or no, just kind of clearing out mental clutter. Then when you're ready, release the hands heavy to the earth. Feet are about hips width apart, two fists. You might grab a brick if you want, put it in front of your face. Inhale, half lift, long spine. Hands come to shins, thighs, or top of mat. Exhale, release, forehead towards shins, head heavy. Twice more, inhale, half lift, weight is in the fronts of the feet, balls of the feet. Exhale to fold. And once more, inhale, half lift, mindful not to lock out the knees. And then plant your left hand in front of the face, maybe on a brick, send the right arm to the sky for a twist. Take a moment here, deep bend into the left knee as you straighten your right leg, stack the shoulders in one line, and then check in with your knees. Make sure they're both facing forward. Can you start to twist from the navel, the ribs, the heart? Now can we send the awareness into the outer seam of your right leg, the IT band, by really pressing the right sole of the foot down, open the heart a little more, release top hand down. Let's switch sides, right hand to the earth, a brick, left arm sweeps up, deep bend into the right knee as you straighten left leg. Draw the shoulders down the back, twist from the navel, the ribs, the heart. And then to get that little accent in the outside of the left leg, press the sole of the foot down. Notice if you feel any subtle difference or change. And release. You can place your brick to the side. One more half lift here, long spine. Exhale, fold. Soft bend in the knees. Start to just roll yourself up, vertebrae by vertebrae. And really mindful, just being present for the entire unraveling, seeing if you can notice any different sensations. Roll the shoulders down the back, turn the palms forward, lift up all 10 toes, really spread them, stretch them, feel the four corners of the feet ground. We'll be working into a lot of balance poses, so really connect to the earth here. As the four corners ground, draw up on the inner arches and then soften the toes down. Classical suns to start or Surya A's. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky, grow tall. Exhale, fold forward. Find your half lift, long spine. Plant the hands, step back into plank pose. Modify chaturanga unless you prefer something else here. Lower knees, chest, chin to the earth, slide onto the belly, untuck the toes. Find a low cobra, keep the back of the neck long. Exhale, release. You can tuck the toes and press through plank or use your knees to down dog. Three breaths here. Spread the hands, press them down and forward, lengthen the side body as you breathe. Really sink the heels down, just finding any opening in the back of the legs. 
Spin the biceps towards the ears and up to the sky. Inhale, bend the knees deeply, gaze at the front of the mat, bottom of the exhale, step or float to the top. Half lift, long spine. Exhale to fold, fingers in line with toes. Reverse swan dive, pressure your feet, reach the arms out to the side, up overhead, palms press, hands come to heart center. Just one more like that. Inhale, reach the sky, Urdhva Hastasana, grow tall, heart lifts. Exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward all the way down. Find your half lift, long spine, draw the shoulders down the back. Plant the hands, step into plank, this time chaturanga, unless you prefer something else. Pitch forward slightly, lower down halfway, your elbows are in towards the ribs. Inhale, up dog, soft bend in the elbows, melt the shoulders down the back, thighs off the earth. Exhale, down dog. Couple breaths here. Slow the breath, ujjayi breath. So even this pose here is an inversion, a place of shifting perspective. So despite it being a pose we come to often in practice, can you start to notice something different? Inhale, bend the knees deeply, gaze at the front, bottom of the exhale, step or float to the top, half lift. Exhale to fold. Reverse swan dive, sweep the arms up, out to the sky, and heart, hands to heart center, pause here. Lift the heart into the thumbs, soften the shoulders down the back, bring back your intention. And then slowly toe heel the feet in towards each other, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. Inhale to reach up, grab onto your left wrist, crescent up and over to the right as you knit your low ribs in. Scoop your top shoulder back, your bottom shoulder forward. Come back to center. Take the opposite wrist up and over to the left, hips and shoulders stay square to the front, slight rotate of the heart to the sky. Come back to center. Cactus the arms, lift the heart, tailbone lengthens down. Bring the arms back to sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold all the way down. Find your half lift, long spine. Plant the hands, step back or float, travel through your vinyasa. You can always skip it and just go to down dog or take a child's pose as needed. We'll meet in our down dog in about two breaths. As you arrive, notice your breath. Spread the hands, anchor into the L of the hands, sink the heels down. When you're ready, right leg extends, long and back, three-legged dog. Open up the hips, stack right hip on top of left. You can bend and extend the right leg, do some hip circles, but square your shoulders to the earth. And then reach the right leg long and back. Now square your hips, press through the heel, inhale. Exhale, right knee to right elbow, weight shifts forward, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, send the leg long and back. Exhale, right knee carves across the body into a twist. Reach the leg long and back. And then gently plant the foot between the hands. Lower the back knee down. Untuck the back toes, find Anjane Asana here. Sweep the arms forward and up. Lift the heart. Rotate the pinky fingers in, lengthen the tailbone down. Keep breathing, relax the shoulders. Can you spiral the outer right hip down? Take one more breath. Release the hands to frame the front foot. Send the hips back, half splits. Flex your right toes towards you. You can always take the bricks here. Left thigh bone is straight up and down. Inhale, long spine as the pelvis tilts forward. Exhale, melt your heart towards your toes. Keep the heart open, the chest open. Two more breaths. Every inhale, the spine gets long. Every exhale, heart towards toes. One more breath. Option to stay here or move into a little IT band stretch. You'll walk your hands over to the right side of the mat, rotate the knife edge of your right foot down. You can keep your hands on the earth, a brick, your choice. And just notice what you feel. Relax the shoulders, the jaw. 
Take one more breath. And then rotate to face the front of the mat. Bend into your front leg, plant the hands, tuck the back toes and lift the knee up. On your inhale, reach the arms forward and up into your crescent lunge. Crescent lunge is where we meet with our right leg bent. You can always widen the stance here, pull the right hip back, the left hip forward. Inhale here. On your exhale, sweep your right arm down and open arm twist to the right, arms out to a T. Keep spiraling your outer right hip down. Lean your right shoulder back a little more. Then inhale, sweep both arms to center, high lunge. Exhale, open up warrior two. You might need to adjust your feet so the front heel is in line with the back heel or the arch. Start to pull your right hip crease up, really extend across the chest. Relax the shoulders. Flip your front palm up, find reverse warrior, reach up and back. Stay for your exhales, you sink a little lower. Another inhale opens up the right ribs even more. Exhale to cartwheel your hands down for a revolved lunge. Left hand comes to the earth or a brick, back heel spins up, right arm reaches to the sky. Notice if that left hip is dropping, can you level out the hips, really press the back thigh up, and then twist from the navel, the ribs, the heart. You can always drop your back knee down. One more breath and release the right hand down. Send the right foot long and back, three-legged dog. Option to float your leg in chaturanga. Cycle through your normal chaturanga. Take a child's pose. We'll meet in down dog before moving into our other side. Take a couple breaths to arrive. And then from down dog, reach your left leg up, three-legged dog. Open up the hip, stack left hip on top of right. Again, can you keep the shoulders square to the earth? And bend and extend the leg, just find some movement, some mobility here. And then reach, extend left leg long and back, square the hips, really press through the heel. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, weight shifts forward. Find cat pose in the upper back. Send the leg long and back, three-legged dog. And then knee across to the opposite elbow. Find a twist. Reach the leg long and back. And then step the foot lightly as possible between the hands. Drop your back knee to the earth. Untuck back toes. Anjane Asana here. Sweep the arms to the sky. Lift the heart. And then take a few breaths. Can your tailbone lengthen down? Lift the ribs away from the hips, maybe a slight back bend here, but relax the shoulders. Wrap the pinky fingers in, take another inhale. Exhale, hands come to the earth, maybe bricks. Ardha Hanumanasana half splits. Send your hips back, flex the left toes towards you. Slow the breath here, three breaths. Can you wrap the outer left hip down? Notice if that changes sensation. Relax the jaw. One more breath. Stay here or find that little IT band stretch, lift the torso. Walk the hands over to the left side, spiral the knife edge of your foot down. Your hands can stay on the earth, a brick, a water bottle. And just notice. Notice if sensation shifted or changed. And breathe here. And then slowly walk the hands towards the front of the mat. Bend into your front leg, tuck the back toe, lift the knee off the earth. Rise to your crescent lunge and pause. Take a moment to find your stability. That might mean widening the stance, but hips are squaring forward, tailbone lengthens down. Big inhale as you reach the arms to the sky. On your next exhale, open arm twist to the left. Sweep your left arm down and back. As you breathe here, can you spiral the outer left hip down? Lean your left shoulder back, one more breath. Next inhale, sweep both arms forward and up, crescent, high lunge. Exhale, open warrior two, spiral the back, heel down, hips and shoulders open to the long edge of the mat. 
front heel in line with the back heel or the arch. Really square your hips towards the long edge, the shoulders, pull the front hip crease up, and then find this wingspan across the heart. Breathe. Flip your front palm up, reverse warrior, reach up and back, stay for an exhale as you deepen. Can you lean into whatever resistance might be emerging and then inhale an even bigger stretch in the side body? Exhale, cartwheel your hands down for a revolved lunge. Right hand to the inside of the front foot, left arm sweeps up. Two more breaths here. Pull the shoulders down the back. One more breath and release. Step the front foot back, three-legged dog. Option to float the leg through the chaturanga or skip it. Down dog is where we'll meet. Let's take a cleansing breath to reset. So inhale, full breath in. Sigh the breath out or flutter the lips. Let it go however you wish. One more. Inhale, full breath in. Exhale, release. On your next inhale, right leg rises high and back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Shift the weight forward. Draw the navel in. Send the leg long and back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, knee comes across the body. Kick the right leg all the way out to the left, knife edge of the foot down. Now, instead of opening to Fallen Star, which some of you might go to, try to square your hips towards the mat, your shoulders towards the mat. So we're going into an IT band stretch first. Breathe here. Almost find plank pose in the upper body. Now you can go to Fallen Star if you want. Spiral the inner knife edge of the back foot down, lift the left arm up. One more breath, and release the top hand down. Send your right leg long and back, and then step it through. Spiral the back heel down, warrior two is where we'll meet. Pause and warrior two. Relax the shoulders, breathe. Straighten your front leg, maybe shorten your stance for triangle. Reach your right arm forward, long side body here. And then right hand comes to the earth, perhaps a brick, shin, peace fingers to big toes. Pull the shoulders down the back, start to really press into the knife edge of your grounded foot, or the big, the ball mound, the big toe ball mound. Lean your top shoulder back. One more breath. On your next inhale, bend into the front leg, reach the right arm up and back, reverse warrior. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down for your revolved lunge, right, left hand to the inside of the front foot, right arm to the sky. Here's where we get to build on if you want. Invitation to toe heel your top foot to the center of the mat. So your right foot is in the center of the mat in the supported side plank, reach your right arm up. You can stay here or do some hip dips, lowering the hips down, reaching right arm towards the back, and then back up. For two more. And one more. Slowly release both hands down, pivot to face the front of the mat, send your right leg high to the sky, and then step it all the way through. Gaze at the front of the mat, Exhale, straighten the front leg, draw the toes towards you, pulse inward. Bend into your front leg again, and then step your back foot to meet it. Sink the hips low, reach the arms up, Utkatasana, fierce pose. Inhale here. Exhale, fly the arms back, Ardha Utkatasana, ribs to thighs, crown of head forward. All right, building onto this, ground into your right foot, carry your left leg up half mountain pose. All right, pause here, anchor your gaze on one spot. Take this into a twist, right hand to the outside of the left knee, left arm sweeps back. Keep spiraling the outer left hip down. Breathe. Slowly come back to center, reach both arms to the sky, arms out to a T, Take your right arm and loop it underneath your left for a hug, backs of hands or fronts of hands touching. 
Keep lifting your left leg up, cross it as high as possible over your right, and wrap it around for your eagle pose. So left leg is wrapping around. You can put the toe pads on the earth, on a brick. You can go for the double bind, squeeze the inner thighs together, steady the gaze, stack your shoulders over your hips. One more breath, almost there. Slowly unravel both, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana, grow tall, and exhale, fold all the way down, Uttanasana. Find your half lift, long spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step or float back, rinse it through a vinyasa. Down dog is where we'll meet for our other side. Let's take a cleansing breath together, big inhale. Full exhale to empty it out. When you're ready, opposite leg, left leg reaches, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, little bit of heat here, core. Send the leg long and back. Knee carves across the body. And then kick the left leg out to the right knife edge of the foot comes down. But start to drop your right hip towards the earth. So trying to find plank pose in the upper body, getting a stretch in the outer seam of the left leg. One more breath. Now open to fallen star, fallen triangle if you want. One more breath wherever you are. Release the top hand down. Send your left leg long and back. Step it through. And rise up to your warrior two. Straighten your front leg. Maybe shorten the stance for Trikonasana triangle. Reach the left arm forward. And then release it down to your support. Make sure that if you're putting the hand on the leg, you're not locking out the knee or dumping the weight. So we're using the core to support us. Spiral the whole torso up. Reach the right arm up. Can you scoop your left hip down and towards the long edge of the mat as you lean the top shoulder back? One more breath here. Keep the length in both sides of the rib cage. On your next inhale, bend into your front leg. Sweep your left arm up and back, reverse warrior. Exhale, cartwheel your hands down for a revolved lunge. Right hand to the inside of the front foot, back heel spins up, left arm to the sky. Option to take it into our side plank hip dip. So toe heel your left foot to the long edge of the mat, toes point towards the long edge, reach the left arm up. Option to stay here or lower the hips, reach your left arm back for three, for two, and one. Plant both hands down, send your left leg long and back, and then step it through, pause, look forward, drop the back knee, lift the heart. Exhale, straighten the front leg, scissor inner thighs together as you pull left toes towards you. Bend into the front leg, look forward, and then step forward. Utkatasana, fierce pose, reach the arms up, sink the weight into the heels, lift the heart, breathe here. And this time we're gonna ground into our left foot. So inhale first, exhale, fly the arms back, Ardha Utkatasana. Left foot grounds, reach the right leg up into the chest, one-legged Tadasana. Pause here, steady the gaze, try to stack shoulders over hips, inhale. Exhale, open arm twist to the right. Breathe. Focus your drishti on one spot. Slowly bring it back to center. Sweep the arms up, out to a T. Left arm sweeps under for a big hug. Backs of hands or fronts of hands touch. Bring the elbows up, still one legged Tadasana. Steady the gaze. Little bend into your standing leg for more stability as you cross the right leg over as high as possible once, maybe twice. As you cross, pull the right hip back so your hips are forward. Here for three, squeeze the inner thighs together for two. One more breath. Slowly unravel, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold. Start to toe heel the feet wide. Point the toes out, the heels in. Sink the hips down into your malasana, your yogi squat. Press the elbows into the knees, lift the heart into the thumbs. 
Relax the shoulders, the jaw. So yogi's choice, depending on what you need for practice. If you want more grounding, stay here. A pana vayu is that downward and outward flow of prana that helps release any stagnancy as well. If you want to keep the twisting alive, you can take open arm twists side to side. If you want a little fire, bakasana crow pose is here for you, the arm balance. Take three breaths in whatever is calling you. Notice if there's resistance to one of these options. Can you lean into the resistance? And start to break up the tamas, the inertia. One more breath. Release the hands, lift the hips. Start to toe heel the feet in towards each other. Half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step or float back, roll through your vinyasa. We'll meet in either a down dog, a child's pose, or something that is a resting pose for you before we start to explore our peak poses. A few breaths here. Mindful of your transition. Wherever you are in your resting pose, take a deep breath. A full exhale. Make your way to down dog if you're in another pose. And start to walk your hands, your feet towards your hands, just so you have your bricks nearby. <clears throat> Go ahead and step your left foot behind your right pinky toe edges of the feet are touching so we're in a cross-legged forward fold you can use your bricks here little supple bend in the knees inhale long spine right leg is crossed over left exhale to fold now you can stay here you can shimmy the hips side to side for a little sciatica release just feel into this And then inhale, half lift, we'll switch it up. The other side. This time left leg is crossed over right. Pinky toe edges touch, half lift, heart open. Exhale, fold. And just to me the hips side to side here. And find your half lift. Unravel both legs, feet hips width apart. This time you can grab peace fingers to big toes, taking a bend in the knees, and then inhale, long spine, traction some length. Exhale to fold, draw the elbows out to the side, head heavy. If the shoulders are kind of inching up towards the ears, draw them down the back so there's spaciousness in the neck. Keep pulling the sit bones to the sky as you melt the ribs to thighs. Slow the breath. One more breath. And find your half lift, release. Exhale, fold. We'll slow roll ourselves up. If you have a strap nearby, you might want to grab it. We'll meet in our mountain pose. Take a moment, just feel into your body, both feet on the earth. If you have the hamstring flexibility and the ability to grab your foot, you might not need the strap, but otherwise start to ground into your right foot. Anchor your gaze on one spot and keep a little bend in your right leg for some more stability. Lift your left leg up to one legged or half mountain, half victory. And then take your strap or your hand and loop it around the foot. Lift the torso up so the shoulders are stacked over the hips. Start to straighten your left leg. It's okay if the knee stays bent. Keep the strap in the right hand though. You can use a, your left thumb as a self-adjustment to spiral the outer left hip down. Keep the shoulders square to the earth and then slowly start to find a twist. Reach the left arm back. If this doesn't quite work for you, you can keep our bent leg twist. One more breath. 
Slowly bring it back to center. All right, so here's where things shift up slightly. You're gonna take the strap behind you, bring it into your right hand again, and then you're gonna to start to fold forward. You might use your bricks. You can keep the foot near the earth. We're moving into our baby grasshopper pose. And I'm gonna to turn towards y'all. I'll ground my left hand down on the earth or a brick. I'm gonna kick my left foot out to the right and a little bit forward. Flex the foot. And then of course, if you can grab your foot, you'll grab it. And if you fall out of it, you just kind of plop onto the earth. So that's okay too. So take a couple breaths to play with this, this transition. Kicking hand into foot. And it's almost like we were just in that cross-legged forward fold. And you're just grabbing the outside of the back foot and kicking it to the side. Find a little bit of chaturanga in the arms, left arm. And then can you slowly come on up and out. All right, let's try the other side. I'm not gonna use the strap, but I'll cue it for those who might want it. You're gonna to start to ground into your left foot this time. Again, a little bend in the knee will help for grounding. Inhale, reach the right leg up, knee into chest. You can stay right here. This is great balance. If you have the strap, loop it around the foot, or you can grab the foot with your hand, left hand to the outside of the right foot. See if you can stack shoulders over hips, start to kick hand into foot, and then rotate the heart towards the right. Reach the right arm back. Keep spiraling the outer right hip down. And slowly bring it back to center. So the foot's going behind, and we're grabbing onto the knife edge again. Fold forward. You can grab a brick, plant the hand on the earth to the side a bit. It's almost like we're in that cross-legged fold again. And slowly we're gonna kick right leg out to left, sink down, breathe for three, two, one. Can we come on out? Slowly release, rise back. Take a moment, separate the feet wide, one hand to heart, one hand to belly. Can you be with whatever happened or didn't happen? Start to walk the feet in towards each other. We'll transition to the earth. When you're ready, inhale, reach the arms to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward all the way down. Find your half lift, long spine, and then plant the hands, rinse through a vinyasa or skip it, where we will meet is pigeon pose or a figure four is better for you, find that. Right knee lands behind the right wrist, flex the foot. For a deeper hip opener, you can walk the shin closer to parallel with the front of the mat, as long as you're not sitting on your hip. So we want hips squared forward. When you're ready, you can settle down, maybe rest forehead onto a brick. If you're moving into figure four on your back, really good if you have sensitive knees. You'll cross the right ankle over the left knee, interlace the hands behind the left thigh, both feet flexed, and you pull the left leg towards you as you lengthen your tailbone down. So take a few big breaths. So our hips are an area that often carries a lot of resistance, a lot of holding patterns. So here as we start to wind down our practice, can you come back to this theme of breaking up the tamas, the stagnant energy? Notice if there's resistance or holding pattern in the body here, the jaw is tight or the face is clenched, and can you soften? and slow the breath down.
Take one more breath, let it be really slow, savor it, thread it through the body. Can the exhale be even fuller, a body's natural way of releasing. And when you're ready, you slowly drape the torso up. If you're in pigeon, if you're on figure four, you can simply switch sides. If you're in pigeon, you can send your front leg long and back, shake it out, rinse through a vinyasa as you wish. But where we'll meet is our hip opener on the other side. Arrive when you're ready. Left knee to the outside of the left wrist. Hips are squaring forward. Take a breath to lengthen the spine first. And when you're ready, settle in. And slow the breath here. Where can you soften? Where can you start to find a little more ease and allowing in response to the work, the work of the practice of showing up to these areas of resistance? Can you use your exhales to consciously relax the body? And take one more slow breath wherever you are. One more full exhale. When you're ready, you'll slowly make your way onto your back, maybe rinsing through a final vinyasa, maybe skipping it. If you have a strap, I recommend bringing the strap with you. As you arrive on your back, your choice, soles of the feet touch, butterfly the knees out, one hand to heart and belly, or take the feet wide, knock the knees in. And just take three breaths. Feel the back body settle. The bones find ease. The muscles fall away from the bones. If your knees are butterflied out, use the support of your hands to close the knees together like you're closing a book. And walk the feet towards you, grab onto your strap, send your right leg high to the sky, and loop your strap around the sole of the foot. Again, you can use your hands or grab onto the leg. Any low back pain, you can keep your left leg bent, otherwise just send the leg long, heavy to the earth. You can take a couple breaths, arms straight. Back body melting down, just pull the right leg in. One more breath. Take the strap into your left hand. Take your right thumb into the crease of the right leg and then start to lean the right leg across the body. Pause as far as you can keep the low back on the earth. So this is a more of an IT band stretch first. And then when you're ready, rock it all the way over. Hips stacked in one line, supine twist here. Let your right shoulder get heavy. Take a big rinse water breath. You can always modify by bending the right leg. See what feels nourishing to your body for one more big breath in this side. When you're ready, slowly come back to center. Release the leg, sole of the foot down, bend the opposite leg. Again, you can use a strap or not use it, your choice. Back pain, you might want to keep your right knee bent, otherwise send it long and straight, heavy to the earth. Start to pull your left leg in towards the chest. Send the breath behind the back of the left leg into the back body, just let the body settle. When you're ready, grab the strap in the right hand, press your left thumb into the seam, 
slowly bring the leg across the body just to this degree that you can start to feel the outer seam of the left leg light up. Relax the jaw. When you're ready, take it into your full supine twist. Left hip stacks on right, left arm extends out. Take a big rinse water breath here. Full exhale. You'll slowly come back to center as you're ready. Move the strap to the side. Draw both knees into the chest. Give yourself a squeeze. If there's anything else you need, a couple movements before our final resting pose, please take what you need now. I'll leave you in Shavasana so you can savor it as long as you wish. Just be mindful to take yourself out when you're ready. And finally, as you're ready, hug everything in. Give yourself the last bit of squeeze and release everything heavy to the earth. Complete surrender. Shavasana.